Hello my soccer universe. This is a truly exciting video for me uh, for many reasons. Um, first one of course, I finished just an hour ago watching uh, the final um, game of the Bundesliga round. I've basically seen a little bit of every game so I'm happy about that one and I'm also happy that I can do it on Sunday so they have a Monday because the last video I waited for the Monday game then I posted it Tuesday in the morning and yeah the views for that were horrendous um, so I'm excited to get this a little bit more uh, sooner in and um, do that second uh, what I'm excited about it is that you will see I have my new graphics for the table you saw already in the what to watch video my new graphics for the matches I've augmented that with the table I will of course run through the videos there's I've packed a lot of information in a very little space but I actually I personally like the result and I hope you will too and yeah uh, let's talk about what happened in Germany and that's the third excitement and that's why you have on the thumbnail the little, little, little La Liga logo on there this La Liga has got the go ahead we will see uh, second week of June we will see La Liga back yay so very happy about that one we will already have uh, next week or the week after so beginning of June we will have Liga Nosh back so this will actually be the next league that I will get my new treatment and then I'm really excited to get La Liga back. Uh, we need that. We desperately need that. It's great to have the Bundesliga back. Uh, as you know, it's not my favorite league, but it's very nicely positioned uh, for everything. La Liga is a league that I'm looking forward to, even if there are no spectators, I'm getting used to that. And um, speaking of no spectators, we had two home games this week where there have been interesting solutions to say it. So enough talking let's get to the game so and before we get to the games jersey choice yes i thought that bayern probably had the was part of the best game this weekend so i decided to wear bayern again and i have a little bit in the mind so last week i wore hertha for the preview and for the what to watch and the review video now i'm doing that for bayern and i hope for midweek because everything is now pointing towards tuesday in the Bundesliga, the big clash, the Klassiker in Dortmund. And I want to wear two Dortmund jerseys just because we have an exciting title race again. Okay, I now jinxed it, didn't I? Yes, I also didn't change here the background. I It was actually do I want to change every two weeks. I probably will postpone this for somewhere in midweek. Uh, I actually like this one almost the best because I'm talking so much about Europe, so it actually is kind of fitting. Okay, enough. Friday evening, Hertha against Union. Hertha continues their great streak. I mean, the game in the first half was really mostly Hertha who didn't take the chances. And then as soon as Ibisevic in the 51st with a nice header made, he made it 1-0, all the flood gets open a minute later. Luke Bacchio, who already had a huge chance in the first half, made it 2-0. Cunha, a uh, really nicely played goal, I have to say. 61st, 3-0, uh, and then Boyata ends the route for Union and Hertha without spectators this time, but you know, makes up a little bit for the Derby loss uh, at the Alte Försterei. And I have to say, Hertha starts looking actually quite good. So, um, Labadier coming in definitely changed the dynamic in the team and also the long break because Hertha before the break was really, really in bad shape. Um, the big one, Gladbach, Le Leverkusen. Leverkusen got the good early start through Kai Havertz, who is, I more and more recognize him as one of the best players in, Germ in Germany, after a nice assist by Bellarabi, um, gets the 1 0. Gladbach needs some time to get into the game, and yeah, uh, towards the end of the game, probably they could have deserved an equalizer, but then there was also a huge chance by, uh, by Leverkusen to make it 2 0, which probably would have ended the game. Early in the second half, Tyram pulls one back, then uh, or gets the team's level, and then Gladbach is really throwing everything forward, and you see they have the momentum to maybe get a goal. Um, there was a challenge, I think it was on Tyram, that was not the penalty was not given, and then pretty much on the return, Kai Havertz, um, not Kai Havertz, um, 
sorry, uh, I think Arangis um, gets into the box, takes a shot and is then with a rather stupid challenge by Elvedi felled in the box. I mean, that he already took the shot and he's fouled thereafter. Um, potentially contentious, although the challenge was so stupid that I think you have to give a penalty for it. Look at that VAR. It was a penalty and Harvard makes it 2-1. And Gladbach cannot really recover again. Sven Bender actually makes it 3-1 for, uh, for Leverkusen and uh, that gives the win to Leverkusen. Now the notable thing there was of course there were all the cardboard fans at Gladbach and I have to say where they put them it actually really looked as, uh, it didn't look like an empty stadium it actually really looked like there are people there so at least the visuals were okay of course that the faces are uh, huge uh, didn't really help. <laughs> Uh, in a way to make it, uh, from looking at ridiculous, I also thought, you know, the wide shots, it doesn't look that good. I was actually thinking, I mean, it's nice to have them packed, but sometimes you leave whole sections on off. If you would scatter it a little bit more, it might look like a badly visited game. Maybe that's something I want to avoid. But there were also away cardboard fans. Uh, some Leverkusen fans put themselves up there and, the, and the Gladbach put them up there. To their credit, I have to say, um, good on you, Borussia Mönchengladbach, uh, that you allowed that because this added, added at least a little bit. Um, the other game, big game was, not big game, Wolfsburg Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund, I don't want to say steamroll, I mean, they didn't play all, all, all the great, but they took their chances and got a very cool victory. Guerrero in the 32nd after an assist by Hazard with um, Haaland's um, kind of stepping over, gets the 1 nil and Hakimi just at a time when Wolfsburg comes and tries to get the equalizer, Hakimi gets the 2 nil and Wolfsburg, you know, as we will see in the same table, they're below this pack of the top five probably in the Europa League spot, but this is the limping I call it the limping three or four, where there is they they don't look fit for Europe. To to be honest, and clearly in Germany there are five teams above the rest, and we'll see that in the table nicely. Uh, any chance for Wolfsburg was uh, taken off once uh, Felix Klaus got a red card. Yes, he did not intend to step on there. If you look in the replay, he clearly steps on the shin with full weight. It's dangerous, but you can see in his he is not looking. So I thought, kind of thought it, it was harsh. Bremen gets a win and it's a win from away. I think they haven't won at home. Uh, where Bittenkurt takes a wide range shot and Bremen looked really safe for most of the time. And then just I think a few minutes before at the end Freiburg thought they had the equalizer. Bremen really I mean, they had the game so much under control in the last 10 minutes, you know, as you do, you sit back and then danger is hitting. And Freiburg would have, would have gotten the equalizer. It came off the post and in, but the guy who took the shot was offside. So Bremen hangs on for a crucial away win because, you know, with a game in hand, they can actually uh, maybe challenge for the relegation spot and doesn't look all that dire in the end anymore. If Bremen can get something going, they might stay in the Bundesliga, although it really, really does not look good at the moment. But this was a vital win for them and Freiburg also in the limping pack. And Paderborn Hoffenheim was a tale of two halves. Um, first half, Hoffenheim absolutely dominating in Mint, Paderborn. Uh, absolutely dominating them and getting an early goal through Skov. Um, but then there was, um, I think it was uh, Bikakcic, who made a horrible mistake on their part, uh, surfed the ball to Srebrne, and he, with a really nice shot, makes it 1-1 in the ninth minute. Hoffenheim should have scored two or three goals in the first half. They didn't. And then in the second half, uh, Paderborn fight them suspect and they could have gotten the winner, uh, but also couldn't, couldn't find it. And Paderborn gets another draw that maybe in the end was deserved, but while the game was going on, uh, in especially in the first half, not. They got a lucky, 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 lucky draw already in Düsseldorf. So Paderborn also not quite dead yet, but it does not look good. You need to get wins if you want to get out of there. Then the big game in the evening was probably the best game, although um, 
one minute into the second half you thought oh this is exactly the game uh, the way you expected to be going with Bayern having a huge lead and not and not relenting Goretzka, Müller and Lewandowski just in the first minute after the half made it 3-0 and Bayern made a lot of chances Frankfurt not being in there but within three minutes from the 52nd to the 55th Martin Hinteregger scores two goals after Sebastian Rode assists and suddenly Frankfurt is full in the game again. Frankfurt going forward, Frankfurt having chances. Unfortunately, they shoot themselves in the, in the foot with stupid defensive errors. Uh, one is where um, uh, on, on, on the back thing was the Costa wants to clear and he plays the ball right into Davis, who just has to slow it home in the 61st, which kind of ended, ended, ended the big <laughs> push for Frankfurt, although they had a big chance to make it 4-3. And then Martin Hinteregger with a uh, comically on goal. He wanted to clear with his heel, hits his other shin, and then it falls into the own net. So he scores twice for Frankfurt, once for Bayern. It ends 5 to Bayern. Um, and then the two today's come. I didn't, I only saw the goals of Schalke Augsburg. Great free kick uh, to make it 1 0 uh, through Leuven. And then Augsburg just takes advantage of Schalke not being in any form at all. They concede, concede in two games seven goals, uh, losing 3-0 to Augsburg. Um, Mainz, Leipzig, I honestly, after what Le um, Mainz was showing and Leipzig was showing in the last week, I didn't expect it that we get almost a repeat of the result from Leipzig with Leipzig just rolling over. Timo Werner scores three goals, Josef Paulsen and Marcel Sarsabitza add two more. Um, I think the third goal through Sabitzer so maybe gets the pick of the bunch, maybe because uh, the precursor to that was just because there should have been the, the goal should have been scored earlier and then he takes a nice shot. So yeah, 5 nil uh, for Lyle, Leipzig, Leipzig emphatically back, finally taking their chances. And then Köln Düsseldorf, um, first half very slow, very bad and uh, before we go to the game, another thing I need to add here. We had now Köln um, let the fans put jerseys onto seats. So this also looks like there are people there and they made it nicely so that there's a big FC logo and then, you know, it looks, it's not as big as in Gladbach. Gladbach did it better, but it's an interesting idea uh, to see, to have at least the uh, lower levels, not all, all that empty. Uh, Köln has more, more of the possession, but Düsseldorf is much more dangerous. And I have to say, uh, as this is the first time I saw the black Düsseldorf jerseys, which on the front with the uh, white-red bands really low, looks nice, but the weird thing is it doesn't wrap around. It does not look nice that it just stops on the sides. Uh, and yeah, the Köln jersey could look nice, I have to say, but I really want to get one Köln jersey soonish. Düsseldorf more clinically and they get probably deserved lead at the halftime through uh, Karaman and um, in the second half seemingly Köln uh, got uh, woke up and went forward had uh, chances in the 58th they had a double chance and then um, Cordoba is fouled in, in the box and wants to take the ball to take the belt the penalty and the players say yeah but it's Mark Uth's turn who converted last week he's the penalty taker and I think that's Tussle made Hoot she Uth not Hoot Uth uh, take the penalty rather poorly and it was an easy save for Carsten uh, Meyer in Düsseldorf's goal and then I thought yeah this is exactly the stuff on which a game can break and if Düsseldorf scores now this does not look good for Köln. Düsseldorf scores. Eric Tommy on the Karl contract makes it 2-0 Düsseldorf. And for the longest of time, I didn't think a Köln might come back. I thought if they get a goal, and they use Modest twice uh, tried uh, bicycle kicks and so on, but it uh, was really not much there. And then there's a nice cross in from Drexler, and Modest heads it in. 80th minute, 1-2. Game on. I'm excited. And Cordoba in the stoppage time, again, after this, but Drexler makes it 2-2. Current even pushing for a winner, but I think probably would have been too much. Although, you know, you let a penalty go. Now, Köln had two home uh, games, two 2 2 draws, one where they had a 2 0 lead and relinquished it. Now, they in the last few minutes uh, came back from it to uh, being 2 0 down. So, uh, very similar but very dis also distinct experiences for Köln. 
With all these results, let's look at the table. And this is what I came up with. Uh, as I said, it's a lot of information. Uh, for me, the most important thing is I could fit everything in this half screen. So uh, that makes it good. Um, you, of course, see, uh, I. it will probably be much less work if I wouldn't include the logos. But for me, a good table should include the logos. So that's why the logo logos are there. Um, you see on the very left, when you see green and red, this means that teams have moved up or down. Then I mark the championship spot number one with a kind of goldenish color. And the next um, light, slightly lighter gold color is for if the team uh, for the Champions League spots. Then the fixed Europa League spots, the next two in Germany in this case, are in blue. And then uh, as a conditional seventh, this depends on the cup results. Uh, but if the cup winner is among the top four, then this becomes a Europa League spot. And then the relegation spot is in light red and the relegation places are in dark red uh, in indicated. Then GP means games played. Then you have wins, draws and losses, which you didn't have in the tables before. And I decided the wins get a green background and a darker green, the more wins there are. So you see Bayern with a lot of... Uh, green there. Uh, same thing for the draws, which I thought is yellow, and just to see where many draws are. And I'm looking here at you, Leipzig, uh, Schalke and Wolfsburg. If those draws were wins, they would be in a much better position. So this is kind of the interesting part to see here. Similar also goes for Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf doesn't lose all that often. With a few more wins, Düsseldorf could be way up there. And of course, losses is self-explanatory. Where we see Mainz having now also joining the bottom ranks in terms of losses. Then you get goals forward, goals against. The color on the back kind of tells you um, what's how many goals forward. This is green and against uh, in red. So you have actually the goal difference uh, shown graphically. And the same thing goes for points, which I really wanted to see. And here you can clearly see we have the top five teams that are kind of closer together. And then there's the break. After Gladbach, Wolfsburg and everything else is kind of closest together again. Potentially you could say, but now that it's only three points each, uh, the bottom looks kind of even. Uh, the last three columns are now numbers from 538. The first column is uh, chance according to 538 to become champions. Second one is chance to qualify for the Champions League. And last one is uh, chance to get relegated. So with all that, we see that Gladbach now for the first time in a long time drops out of the top four places with that loss. And yeah, will be tough weeks ahead for Gladbach. And if we look at the chances for qualifying for Champions League, they have now the worst uh, because they still have a rather um, hard program ahead, ahead of them. Whereas Leipzig, kind of, they already, I know they played Bayern, they played Leverkusen, they played Gladbach. I think they only have have, have a game against Dortmund. Uh, but did they play that also? Not 100%, but you know, they have a relatively easy schedule, so glad, uh, Le Leipzig will probably also cruise to the Champions League. Um, Europa League, uh, yeah, I think we know that uh, one, of the, one of the top five will be in the Europa League, uh, most likely Gladbach. Um, but then it's a wide open race, I would say. I mean, I would even go as far as to say Augsburg is not really out of it, but uh, def definitely everything from Wolfsburg to Hertha uh, has a chance of getting in there. Um, I'm a little bit worried about Frankfurt. Frankfurt, yes, if you played Bayern, that's all right. You play now uh, two rather tough opponents uh, in Gladbach and Bayern, so maybe that skews the table a little bit. Uh, and you see there is not much chance for relegation, it's kind of a minuscule chance. But still, I'm a little bit worried, worried about Frankfurt. They might not end up in European spots, and I'm not sure what this will mean for uh, Trainer Hütter. Coach Hütter, I should say. Hertha kind of moves up. Köln had a big chance to move uh, even further up in the top half of the table. As did Schalke. I mean, Schalke could, could be now in a safe sixth spot, but they completely messed mess it up. Towards the bottom of the table, Mainz. And if you look, Mainz has a lot of wins and hardly hard, hard any draws, but they also have a lot of losses. And as soon as they don't get wins anymore, I think Mainz is in a, a threat to get at least to the relegation spot. Düsseldorf has been now collecting slowly points, as did Paderborn and Werder Bremen. Got actually in the two rounds now the most points. Um, and it is close, it's only within three points. Bremen has a game against Frankfurt in hand. 
There's something in there, given how Frankfurt uh, is playing at, at the moment. So, um, Paderborn's chances actually to be re relegated increased, whereas Werder really, they were over 70% last week, and now it looks much uh, ro rosy and Düsseldorf went down. So, let's see how it goes. Let's finish with the second Bundesliga, where I didn't see much, but I uh, tried to watch the Hamburg-Bielefeld game, where Hamburg had many chances, hit the post, should have won it, Bielefeld hangs on, Bielefeld will look good, and Stuttgart managed to lose to Kiel. I don't know what's happening to Stuttgart, uh, basically shooting themselves in the foot again, uh, not taking their chances, and then giving up goals, losing 3-2. I am also kind of surprised at uh, how many draws happening in Bundesliga, especially in second Bundesliga, especially if you look now at the table. Um, again, similar as before, I've just now the promotion spots are outlined in green, relegation spots are the same, and we have now 538 chances. We have again champion, promotion, and relegation. And we see Bielefeld really looking strong now. Uh, a loss would have dampened the chances now uh, they remain with the seven point lead and Bielefeld looks uh, like likely uh, promoted or relegated. So it's HSV, Hamburg and Stuttgart and they are meeting also in midweek so not only the Bundesliga is a huge clash also the second Bundesliga. Heidenheim could get in there but you know uh, let's wait I really hope Stuttgart gets uh, the drift there, the Bratteristen still has some games to make up. Well, that was it. All of the Bundesliga and second Bundesliga action summarized in a video. Very happy to have done that. Let me know what games you watched and whether you agree with the assessments that I have of these games. Give me a thumb up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know anything below. Uh, if you like the new graphics, uh, if it's too busy, whatever. Uh, I am happy for any feedback uh, on this. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or anything else. Just check out my channel, what there is there. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.